Hi guys, uh, if you watched my design review of the BMW E60, uh, you're going to find a lot of features that I talked about in, in terms of the design, but uh, today I'm going to walk you around the car so you can have a closer look at some of these design features that I was talking about, because a lot about design is tactile, it's about feel and touch, and that's how a lot of the designers do their work, a lot of clay modeling and touching the surfaces, see how they feel. So it's not just about how they reflect on the light or how they sit in different environments. So today we're going to walk around this uh, E60 and just point a few things. It's going to be a short video, so just uh, bear with me. So that there is the side view of the car, uh, very nicely proportioned, as I mentioned before. This has got the sport package, so it's got the 19-inch uh, rims. It's lowered slightly, so the stance is just beautiful. I mean, it's, it's one of the most beautiful... Uh, four-door sedans that uh, there ever was but this is typical BMW they really know how to uh, balance their designs so it's it's really nice just one look at it you can tell that this is a rear-wheel drive car uh, or maybe uh, all-wheel drive car but rear-wheel drive based really really nicely done and uh, yeah we're gonna go around have a little bit of the features the best uh, feature I talked about was that this uh, Hoffmeister King coming down and following that line, the door line, and coming down all the way to the front, that is just one of the most beautiful designs that are there. Now, when you look at it from other angles, you see that it's even more exciting, you know. It's, it's not just one straight line or two straight lines. It's undulating following the shoulder. So it's, it's really nicely done. Uh, the surface here kind of widening to let you know the rear hunches that this is a rear wheel drive car really nice and that goes really well with those 19 inch uh, rims just really really beautifully done uh, like in the design review we're going to look at the bangle bat and uh, something that a lot of people did not like but that's just the design of this surface here not not a very well executed i mentioned that the new class the had this, you know, the new class of the 1960s by Michelotti. They all had a clamshell trunk, but there was a hidden dent line that went all along, and BMW had that for years, but uh, they finally got rid of it. In the absence of that line hiding uh, this opening here, it, it does not look very good, you know, but uh, at the time, at least, it did not look good. Now we're kind of used to it because we see it. We've had this for 20 years, and Every other car maker has it. You know, Honda has it in their Accord, Nissan has it in their Altima. Even Mercedes had it in one of their S classes in the 2000s. So it's, it's something that has grown and people have gotten used to it. But uh, yeah, it's, it takes a little bit of getting used to. The tail light, also unusual BMW. I mentioned that the design changed. Now the leading edge of the tail light is at the front and the, the lower edge or the trailing edge is at the back, which we still can't quite define. But the taillight is just beautifully done. I mean, when you look at those uh, uh, light pipes with the LEDs at night or when the, when the brake lights are on, just beautifully done, you know, beautifully done. Something subtle that you don't see on that trunk is that BMW does occasionally is they have a little spoiler, kind of integrated spoiler that just flips up a little bit. It's kind of difficult to see, but when you get a little closer, you can see that there is that. And it's just not one surface, but there's a top curve up here and then there's a lower curve right here that is it blends really beautifully and a lot of people don't get to see that i talked about a little bit of a a portion aerodynamic portion on the on the tail light i'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it but that is that little angle right there a lot of cars have it in different places in the front headlights it reduces noise and it helps in aerodynamics it helps you know, prevent having such a huge vortex of air running around here. So it's really nicely hidden. A lot of people don't notice that, but it's beautiful. The side marker lights are hidden there, LEDs. A lot of people don't notice that, but it's there. Just beautifully done. Beautifully done. Uh, the, t the tail, I talked about the exhaust pipe, that if you look at it now, it's not very well balanced because they're all on one side. It's left side heavy. Uh, all the newer ones now have, you know, exhaust pipe on both sides, even if they have fake ones. I think Mercedes has fake ones, but BM, BMW not, does not have fake ones yet. But uh, at that time, this is a V8, uh, you know, big pipes in it, but all sitting on one side. You couldn't tell, you know, you couldn't tell that this was the big boy until you drove it or you saw uh, 
the, the decals there, designating it as a 550 with a V8. But really nicely done. Hofmeister King, we talked about that uh, de uh, design feature that was there to help you get into the car much easier without knocking your head there. Nicely done. BMW is kind of trying playing around with it. I asked you guys to check the G20 uh, 3 Series that's coming out, I believe, in 2019. They're kind of playing with it. All other companies have tried to play with it. Honda probably just does it best, just like BMW, not as a stylistic feature, but as a convenience feature, so you can get in and out much easier. As I mentioned, uh, Infinity is covering theirs back this way. Absolutely unnecessary, but that is their signature. They're going to keep that. To understand a little bit of the flame surfacing I was talking about, this is a negative surface, meaning it's dipping in and coming out. It's still a reflective surface, you know, catches a lot of the, the bright light, you know, a light catcher, as the designers call it. As you can see here, it's lighter up here than it is here. But then you come down here, this is a concave. It, it pops out like that and then squeezes back in and splits out like that. Very, very nicely done. Another subtle line that you could not see from the review video, and I'm not sure you're going to see that from here, is they have a little dedent here to prevent you from getting dirt on your pants when you open the door and there's dirt here. Kind of convenient to stop you doing that. It's beautifully done. It's very, very subtle and you see it there. But uh, then you've got the fascia up here. Beautifully done. The curve, I was talking about, it actually curves a little bit that way. But it lowers the car really nicely, makes it look beautiful. Big mirrors. I talked about the daylight opening and lack of chrome. This blacked out makes the daylight opening look a lot larger than it is. Beautifully done. BMW, uh, Audi, and probably Honda do their chrome the best. They really know how to do it. Very subtle, very slim, very effective, bright and effective. This is, of course, the sport, so it doesn't have that. It just has, you know, it's all blacked out. Makes the daylight opening a little bit bigger. Of course, it's a sports sedan, so we got big windows. That's a big windshield, even for the time. A big windshield for the time. But it works really beautifully. One thing I didn't talk about in my review before was the wheels. Now, in terms of design, of course, this, these are 19-inch uh, wheels for the sport package, so not on, on every E60. But they are 10-spoke double, 10-spoke, beautifully done. They're very deeply dished. That tells you that they're very sporty, makes the car look wide. But at the same time, having so many spokes let you know that this is an executive luxury kind of car. So that's nicely done. I mean, they could have had seven uh, spokes or they could have had five spokes, five double spokes. It would have still really looked good. Five would have made it really, really sporty. But the designers want you to know that this is also an executive uh, car. So it looks really nice. They're tough. Not too many surfaces. They've got the surface facing us here and the surface away from us at a 90 degree angle. So it doesn't reflect so much light that you don't need to because it's not an opulent luxury car. Another thing I didn't mention is the wheel arcs. You can see that little border on the wheel arcs. This is something that was new coming into the late 1990s, 2000. Um, it's really nice because it borders the wheel arc nicely creates a nice little light catcher as well. It changes with the direction when the car is moving, it changes. You see it a little dark here, and then as it stretches over the hood, it lightens up a little bit. Uh, almost every car company is using that now. Beautifully done. Uh, side marker light for the North American market, of course. This wasn't in the European cars. It's up there, it's got a little reflector on the side marker so you can see uh, from the side that is required if you live in the United States. Beautifully done. I talk about the headlights uh, mimicking a little bit of uh, the new class, you know, the 1500, the 2000, the 2002, all of them uh, had this kind of headlight. I mean, they had a separate headlight, a circular headlights here on the shark nose, but they also had the indicators sitting up here. Uh, they were all separate. Uh, BMW went and combined it in this weird shape, you would call it. The designers were not like me saying that but uh, I just can't define that shape but uh, it's what BMW did then it looks it's it's nicely executed but the design is not uh, that good the build is good the quality is good and of course it's got all the high-tech LED lights high intensity discharge light and the angel eyes at that time very very beautifully done uh, part of it now uh, uh, important note on those uh, angel eyes 
those were actually developed by a company that tried to sell them for so many years to other car companies, but no one would take it. Finally, BMW took it, and it's been a trademark of their cars. They're changing it now from the circular to the hexagonal, but still the feature is really nice. When it, you know daytime running light, it identifies it as a BMW, and you know that that is important today in defining, uh, defining and describing a particular car. Of course, the kidney grill, they call that the kidney grill. Uh, BMW has had that for a long time. It's gone through a lot of iterations. It's gone from the shark nose with a top, a little farther front, and now it's come to this one, which is a little bit more aerodynamic. At least it looks more aerodynamic. I don't doubt that it is more aerodynamic. It's newer, so chances are it is. But beautiful little detail here, light catches or datum lines to position the grill there. I talked about it being chrome, even though it's a sport. A little bit of ornamentation or jewelry in the design. Very nicely done, especially in this dark uh, gray color. It looks really, really nice. Nothing fancy in there, just the grill up here, and you see the uh, radiator behind it. No big deal. Uh, BMW Ronda put up there front and center. Very prominent, so you know exactly what kind of car this is. And uh, get out of my way. Of course, uh, the front spoiler, nice and low on this sport package with the fog lights. Uh, just nicely done these light catches i mentioned they're really beautiful of course the uh, headlight uh, wipe wash wipers up there too but this surface really really nicely done uh, i always say when i see this the clay modelers and the sculptors must have had a lot of fun uh playing with this doing this and working on these surfaces and that's why i said it's as it, when it comes to design it's all about touch and feel sometimes touch and feel if it if you you touch it it feels nice chances are it will look nice in, in the right proportions, in the right color, in the right conditions. It will really, really look good. And that's what the, the overall shape is about. Now we're gonna go inside. I hope I, I have enough light so we can see what the inside looks like. Uh, another design feature that a lot of people just don't see or pay attention to is the door handles. Now, most door handles like this, you pull it out and the door opens. BMW went a little farther. You pull it out and it go, does not just come towards you but it goes up and away from you. That is ergonomics. That is making the door handle work for people. It's, you know, it's not just simple. Of course, it's not cheap to make it that way. It's much cheaper just to make it pull out, but BMW won extra, so beautifully done. Interior I talked about, uh, really dark interior. This is typical BMW, very austere interior, dark, but um, well executed, dark, dark dark this is a business uh, cockpit it's a place where you go in jump in and drive and possibly drive really hard in comfort so typical BMW I would say other than the banacle I talked about this was not typical at the time they put it up there for visibility but it made it kind of ugly with that banacle going over there a lot of people did not like that but uh, uh, everything else kind of seems just normal BMW apart from the features I talked about uh, I'm gonna start it so you can see what's going on here and you can hear it but um, some of the features I talked about were the, the transmission lever that centers itself so it's not very tactile because you don't know what gear you are in it feels the same whatever gear you are in and uh, it feels good to the hand so in terms of ergonomics it's beautifully done but tactility not very not very good and it took some getting used to but if you're going to own this car for a year or two you'll get used to that the other was the control for the i drive that a lot of people had problems with uh, it's just a mouse for controlling uh, the the screen up there but people had a lot of problem with it and uh, uh, they claimed it was unreliable bmw says people were not it was not intuitive enough for people at the time and they'll get used to it and a lot of people did get used to it so uh really really in uh uh, a little a little weird I'd say the other thing that I said was weird was uh, the indicator or the signal lights when you turn that the signal lights would go on but it would center itself the lever itself would center itself and a lot of people do not get used to that you know it just centers itself and only when you turn the steering wheel that it will go off but the lever just stays maintains that position so that was a little weird for a lot of people and it took some getting used to Everything else is kind of typical BMW. I mentioned how they brighten it up a little bit uh, with a polished aluminum look on the on the dials, just to bring a little life into it. It's a dark, in, really dark interior. Uh, 
and this video is probably dark too but a little brushed aluminum in there and they put that on the door handles too but uh, everything else was uh, kind of typical BMW really nicely designed I did mention that it kind of replicated the uh, 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 flame surfacing on the outside it doesn't look that way but uh, it, it, it really does it kind of matches the outside a little bit in terms of the the, uh, the surfaces the way they undulate and the way they change from positive to negative uh, really nicely done another thing I didn't mention was the window controls uh, typical BMWs always had the window controls at the center but they needed of course to make some room here so they moved the window controls up to the passenger has theirs and the, of course the driver has control of all the other four windows but they moved them from the typical BMW spot that was here make some room I do believe it's also a safety issue so that everyone has easy access to the controls so all the passengers have theirs and the driver has theirs the passengers behind everyone has theirs and they did always have theirs but the positioning is kind of different much more easier to access I talked about a little bit of flourish in, in some of the design features Brushed aluminum looks very good, but it's the design that is kind of different. BMW always had kind of a rectangular uh, door, door pulls on the inside. They kind of put a little bit of excitement into it, maybe dynamism. I'm not sure if that I'm using the, the, the right word, but really not, not, uh, not a very bad design. A little bit of excitement uh, packed with technology. Uh, that a lot of people thought was questionable at that time. The dials, typical orange with BMW, and they're actually floating dials. Of course, you'd wonder why uh, BMW did not go with the dark uh, dials like uh, Lexus did. The Lexus had that 1989 on the LS400. But uh, this is what BMW did now. They were good with it, they were comfortable with it, and they did not uh, go too far in, in messing anything up. So that is uh, the interior of the car, just uh, beautifully, beautifully done, I'd say. I think that's uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be it. If there's anything else uh, anybody needs to add, please just go into the comment section. Uh, a lot of criticism and uh, a lot of uh, a good word uh, will be appreciated. So thank you.